All right, what's going on? So I'm just going to cut straight to the cha uh, straight to the point and get to the uh, review guide. And this is <clears throat> straight from the uh, the packet. So let me just pull up my uh, thing there. And uh, all right, those comments aren't super helpful, so I'm just going to go on. And uh, I mean, I'm not complaining, but. Um, yeah, so I'm recording this and I'm going to post it on YouTube when I'm done. And, um, like I said, we'll just go right through it. So you can use the remind if you have questions, you can, uh, just comment on the, uh, on the Twitch and either way I'll get your message. So I'm just going to start with this and it says uh, we've got these four free body diagrams. Let me just turn this a little bit. And they all show different forces and different arrows and it wants to know which of the, of the above diagrams shows an object at rest. So an object at rest will have a constant velocity of zero. And is the audio okay? Well, your stream broke. Mm, I'm still seeing it. I'm going to continue on because I'm still seeing it. Um, but I'll keep an eye out for it. So um, anyway, an object at rest has a constant velocity of zero. And what that just means is that all the forces are balanced. And so we just had to look for things where uh, these diagrams up here, where the forces are balanced. So in this case, uh, we have A, where we have a uh, force to the left, force to the right, both 20 Newtons. Uh, force up and down are both the same. So in this case, A is at rest, uh, or it can be at rest anyway. So letter B, uh, the down is 25, up is 25. And left and right aren't balanced, so that one can't be at rest. That one's going to be accelerating. Really? Oh, hang on. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm just going to pause here then. I think I know what the case is. All right, <clears throat> how's that? Sorry about that. I thought I got that all fixed the other day, but I had to reinstall some things, so my bad. Is that any better? So, <clears throat> anyway, um, since uh, those two are balanced, Crud, really? Dang it, physics time. Why would it be doing that? I swear I did all this the other day. I apologize, everybody. Let me just manually turn all these down. Well, this is embarrassing. All right, there should it be only one. Um, all right. I'm going to continue on and hope it works. I got them all turned down. I don't see any other microphones anywhere. Let me know if it's still going on and I'll cry, but I'll try to fix it. Um, so anyway, A is balanced, C is balanced, and D is not balanced, so that is definitely uh, moving, or at least accelerating in the direction of, holy cow, why? For real, you're hearing me twice. Oh, 
Holy cow. Sorry, you're not supposed to be uh, helping me uh, fix this stuff here. Let me just cancel that. Mm hmm. Okay, no, I don't definitely want that. Map. Let's down. Dock him. Well, this kind of stinks. So do this one, bloop. Okay. It's working now? It's working now. All right. No, it's not uh, the computer. It is just me not... Uh, like I said, I had to reinstall a couple things. I really am sorry. That just is not cool. Um, I really thought I got that all fixed up before. So, all right, we're good. Everybody seems to be thinking it's good. So, all right. Good thing we're on the easy stuff. Uh, so balance things at rest, it's balance. At rest means, again, constant velocity, constant V of zero. So a constant velocity of zero, it's going to be at rest. So it has to be balanced. <clears throat> All right, cool. So which one is accelerating? Well, it's going to be the opposite then. If uh, balance is, if it's at rest, meaning it's balanced, then accelerating means it has to be unbalanced. And it's going to accelerate in um, the direction of the uh, of the unbalanced arrow. All right, it looks like the audio is working, so um, we're good. All right, so unbalanced. Well, B is unbalanced. It's basically the ones that I didn't choose above, and D is unbalanced. So they are unbalanced, so they're going to be accelerating. All right. <laughs> uh, no, I appreciate the good good feedback, but uh, I think it's all fixed. It's good. You guys could chat. Just be good. Um, which one is moving with a constant velocity? Well, again, we kind of answered that with question number one. It's going to be A and C, constant velocity. It could be a uh, zero velocity. It could be positive. It doesn't matter, but it's constant. And constant velocity of zero, it's balanced. So which one shows the motorcycle speeding up? Since none of the forces are uh, labeled, basically uh, it could be, well, probably going to be either B or D. It doesn't really say, but I'm going to go, I think um, in the key, I don't have D chosen because um, there's no friction and, or rather this is probably friction. And that's, you know, if there's only one force acting on a motorcycle. It's going to be fr friction. So I'm going to go with just B is the motorcycle speeding up because it's going to show both friction and the uh, force of the motor. And which one shows it sliding to a stop? Well, just kind of like what I said, if there's one force on it, one unbalanced force, then we're talking about something sliding to a stop. That force is going to be friction. So I'm going to go with D, uh, the last one, D. Here. All right. So not seeing any questions right now. I know somebody uh, requested 13. I'll get to 13 specifically, but um, we want to draw free body diagrams for these follow these scenarios here, and all it is is uh, a couple things with the free di body diagrams. Let me just um, move my little window so I can see what I'm doing here. All right. So the first one is a light fixture hanging motionless from the ceiling, number six here. So anytime you draw a free body diagram, there's a couple things you got to know. Uh, the first is you just start with a box to represent everything, no matter what it is. And then the arrows are supposed to represent both magnitude and direction. So obviously you point the arrows where you want it to point and you draw the size to represent the amount of force. So for number six, you've got a light fixture hanging motionless from the ceiling. Well, we're on Earth, and so the uh, first thing you want to look for is... Uh, first thing you want to look for is gravity pulling downward. So I'm going to draw the arrow pulling downward. I'm going to label it with my terrible pencil, the FG, force of gravity pulling downward. And because it's hanging motionless, it's like we said above, we got a constant velocity. And 
if you have a constant velocity of zero, it's balanced out. Hey, you guys could chat all you want, but I'm kind of paying attention. So if you got questions, I should be able to for filter them out. Uh, just uh, keep it, you know, appropriate. Anyway, what's balancing that out? Well, it's a light fixture hanging from a ceiling. So I'm just going to go with the tension here as my uh, balancing force. So I'm talking like I'm uh, making a YouTube video here, but please do uh, message me or, or send reminders or whatever with questions if you have any. And I will turn off my lecture voice. Uh, all right, plane accelerating through the air. Well, include air resistance. So it's accelerating through the air. I'm going to assume that means it's speeding up. So when you have a plane, we draw a plane with a box, just like everything. And it's on Earth or wherever. It's under the influence of gravity, so I'm still going to have my FG. It's accelerating through the air. It doesn't say it's going up or down. And so I'm going to balance that out. But instead of tension this time, and there's no normal force, because normal force is um, like a force of a surface pushing up on it. It's going to be just the force of air holding the airplane up. It's accelerating. And like I said, that means it's going to be moving forward. The force of the engine, and I guess we could call that applied. So it's an applied force pushing it up or pushing it forward. And we've got some air resistance, but since it's f like speeding up, I'm not going to make the air resistance quite as um, long as the applied one. So right there is this is balancing out this and so it's not balancing out it's actually uh, much bigger so it's going to be pushing the forward the plane forward so it speeds up all right oh i just saw my uh stream glitch there but it looks good now all right what else what else we got a feather dropped from i'm going to skip a couple here just to kind of uh keep moving on um cell phone that you left on top of the car slides to the right as the car turns left that's sort of a big one and I want to make sure that you get number 12. So I'm going to write it in purple because purple is an important color, I've heard. And so we've got a car. This is actually one of the ones that are missed a lot by students on a test. So be very careful here. I'm going to put a little star by this because, like, literally, you're going to get this wrong. No, you might not get this wrong because you're watching this but a lot of other people are going to get it wrong and so let's do number 12 here Keontae might but i don't know him um your cell phone that you left on the top of the car slides to the right as the car turns left let's make sure i got this lined up pretty good here all right so once again we got the we we draw everything as a box okay so there's my cell phone sitting on top of my car. I'm going to call looking at this from the side. So I've got my force of gravity pulling down. And good, thanks. I I'm I'm I know you're not going to um get it wrong. So it's sitting on top of the roof of the car. And so what that means is that it's just balanced out by the normal force of the car the roof of the car and what happens is now here's the confusing part because for number 12 it says uh the car how do i say this well let's just read it the cell phone that you left on the top of the car slides to the right as your car turns left all right now think of it this way is the cell phone actually sliding to the right well no because what's the what's what's happening is the um, <laughs> the uh, the car is turning to the left, and what is your cell phone doing? Your cell phone is trying to keep going straight. It's got inertia, and inertia just means that it's going to keep moving in the direction it was moving, and so it seems like it's sliding off to the right, but what's really happening is it's moving in the direction it was moving. It's trying to move straight. So what happens is your car is turning to the left. So what direction is the is your phone being pushed? Well, your phone is being pushed 
to the left by the friction of the car. So here's your frictional force by the uh, by the car, by the roof of the car. And so even though your cell phone looks like it's getting moved to the right, being pushed to the right, it's not. It is being pushed to the left. It's just not being pushed to the left mm, quick enough to keep up with the car. And so it slides off to the right, like relative to the car. All right. So once again, let me point that out. Guess what the most common wrong answer is? The most common wrong answer is somebody, here's the most common wrong answer. You get all that, you get the uh, force of gravity, you get the force, the normal force. And well, it says the car, the cell phone that you left on the road, it's sliding to the right. So you might think, well, that must mean it's being pushed to the right, but nope, that is not correct. Okay, it just looks like it's moving to the right, even though it's not. All right, so that's number 12. All right, uh, everything else I think on that list, I'm gonna do number 13 and 14, but let's just, well, I guess I'll skip to that right now. So let me make sure I got this on here. Sorry, you keep losing connection. I hope you get it fixed. All right. So for 13, all right, this one was uh, specifically asked by one of my students. You got a cat sitting still on a ramp. All right, remember to draw it to scale. So I'm gonna start by not drawing the force diagram. I'm just gonna draw the sort of the situation here. It doesn't specify any uh, angles or anything like that. So I'm just gonna draw a ramp and I'm gonna draw the cat. And I guess I'm gonna draw it as a box because I can't draw a cat, at least this quick. So I take this idea and I've got a uh, cat sitting on a ramp and I'm going to just use this to kind of help me out. So you got gravity pulling it down. You've got the force of gravity keeping uh, the cat, you know, from falling. So there, there's friction that's kind of like holding the cat in place. And you're going to have some sort of like normal force right here. All right, I'm not labeling them because I'm just sort of sketching it to give myself an idea here. Uh, the cat was wanting to slide down the ramp, but I th that's just because of gravity pulling it down. There's literally nothing like trying to actually pull it down except for gravity. So let's take this out and actually draw the force diagram. So just like, well, that is a terrible pencil. So I'm just gonna, just like usual, draw my little thing. Now, actually on, um, situation like this, you might actually draw the box diagonally. Either way, I think it's going to be fine. All right. So let's make sure I'm still lined up there. Knocked it around a little bit. All right. So we got our force of gravity pulling downward. All right. But I don't know. This is the key is I don't know how hard gravity is going to be pulling. So I'm going to Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, what I do know is that this cat is in balance right now. It's not moving. All the forces are balanced out. So we have our force of friction keeping it up the ramp, all right? And we've got some sort of normal force keeping it from falling through the ramp. And now I could get an idea about how big to draw my arrows. So watch what I do here. I'm going, I know that, um, I know that the normal force is being balanced out. So I'm going to draw a little dotted line to sort of represent the force that's balancing out. Make sure it's showing up and not a glare. Good. So I drew this little dotted line the same like length as the normal force because those are balanced out. I also know that the, the, the frictional force is being balanced out by the gravity pulling it downward. So I'm going to kind of like draw Again, I'm going to just, I'll just draw a little light line here, a little light line there. So those last two lines represent the, uh, the forces that are balancing out friction and normal force. What do I do with that? Well, I know those two. So what I just basically did right there is I took this frictional like balance out, the, basically it's a parallel force, and I just redrew it down here. So 
In fact, let me use fancy green. So fancy green, those two lines are the same, okay? And I've already got this normal force. So basically what I'm gonna do is that gives me an idea about how long to draw my force of gravity. So right there is my force of gravity, okay? Um, in fact, I'm going to label that force of gravity. All right, now, see what I did there? So once again, just to kind of recap, this line represents the force of gravity that's balancing out the normal. This line right here represents the force of gravity that's balancing out the friction. So roughly the same size. You might want to take something to measure and make it sure it's, because I just kind of sketched the idea here. Now those forces don't actually exist, so ideally I'm going to want to erase those. Unfortunately, some idiot drew a green line right there, and um, it's not going to go away. So two green lines aren't going to go away. So I'm going to erase those, and that's number 13 to scale, or at least as close to scale as I'm going to get it. All right, I didn't use a ruler. You might want to use one if you can, just to make sure it's good. All right. Pausing for questions, but not seeing too many. I'm just going to move on. And that was 13. So now we are down to a jack-o'-lantern. So a jack-o'-lantern hanging from number 14, from two wires. And it gives us the tension and blah, 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 blah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that one till later. All right, I'm going to come back to it, kind of get through these easy ones, and then we'll get to the, one of those uh, at the end. How about? Okay, so moving along, what is Newton's first law? 14, or I'm sorry, 15 now. Newton's first law is just, I'll just write it here. This is the law of inertia. And so that's something you're going to want to look up just to make sure you get the idea of uh, it's, an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object that's in motion will continue at that constant velocity until it's acted on by an by a net force. All right. So, since I don't have to summarize, it, I can just talk all I want. Uh, if something's moving, it's going to keep moving in a straight line at that speed, unless there's an outside force acting on it. Usually, there's friction that's going to slow it down. So. So we're just used to stuff slowing down on its own. But the only reason stuff slows down is because we got friction and air resistance. If that stuff wasn't there, things would just keep going forever. That's what happens in outer space. The other side is, if something's at rest, it's got a constant velocity of zero. So guess what? It's going to stay at constant velocity of zero until there's an unbalanced net force acting on it. It's also going to go in a straight line unless there's a force acting on it. And so that's why when you're in a car and somebody turns, you feel it. You don't feel it if somebody's going at a constant speed because there's no outside forces. Everything is balanced. You're going at a constant speed, so there's no acceleration at all. Um, so that's Newton's first law. It's inertia. Things have inertia. Let me just check my little list of things that people miss. I put it on my phone, so just give me a second. I want to say property of inertia force at a constant velocity. Yeah, force at a constant velocity, everything is balanced. Um, what determines inertia? That's an important question. Uh, the only thing that, hang on a second. The only thing that determines something's inertia is its mass. And actually it looks like number 16 is all about that. So let me just write that in. Ooh, what color is this? ultra fine point. That's not a color. It doesn't even say. It's this color. I think it's magenta. So what determines how, what property of an object affects how much inertia it has? Well, big magenta letters, I almost wrote magenta, is its mass. Underline, underline. That's it. It doesn't matter how fast it's moving. It doesn't matter what it's thinking. It doesn't matter anything. It just, the only thing that affects it is how much mass it has. All right. So let me see what else we got here. Uh, net force and turning I wrote down. These are just my little notes to uh, help me remember what people get wrong on these tests. So I can't say this enough. When 
the only way something turns is that there's an unbalanced force. All right. If I go back up to this question right here, this thing can possibly be turning. This almost actually could represent a car moving at a constant speed. Let's like this, this car could be moving forward at a constant speed, let's say 20 miles an hour. But because they turn the wheel, you, you have the road, you have the friction of the road pushing it to the right. So it's going to turn to the right. All right. It's like if there wasn't any friction, if they were on like really loose gravel or if they were on ice, then the road couldn't push them. And so they would keep going straight. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's getting wet, you know, it's rainy out today, it's slippery out, whatever, you're walking down the hall. If you take a corner too fast with slippery shoes, you're, you're going to slip. And what does that mean? It just means that we use the word slip and that just means that you don't have friction. There's no, there's no force of friction to push you. And so what happens is you keep moving in the direction you are moving, but your body was getting ready to, to turn. And so everything gets all awkward and you fall and you know, whatever you slip and everybody laughs. The mean people do. So that's what I want to make sure you get is that the, the net force, on something that's turning is pushing it in the direction that it's going to turn. All right. Otherwise, it would just keep going in a straight line. And if it was going in a straight line, no, I was like, if it was turning and suddenly there's no more force pushing it to the center, the thing's just going to straighten out and start moving in a straight line. All right. I made a note of that. I guess I think I remember a lot of people look at that. There's questions related to that. So just make sure. You remember that if something there's no net if there's no net force there's no way that thing's going to turn it's going to keep moving in a straight line or maybe it's standing still you don't know all right your spaceship i'm looking at 17. let me scooch this up 17. let's get that centered all right so your spaceship explodes and sends you flying in outer space outside the orbit of earth will you keep moving forever at the same velocity or will you eventually slow down to, ex to a stop? Explain why. Well, if you're in outer space and your spaceship explodes, yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, and yes, you will continue to fly and uh, you just keep moving away and away and away forever, forever. You'll never, ever, st well, your, your body will never stop moving. You're, it's just going to keep flying through the air. I mean, sorry, through space forever. Um, why? Well, still in number 17. It just got done saying that's, that's Newton's first law, inertia. If you start moving, you're going to keep moving forever. All right, 18. So true or false, a force must be constantly applied to an object in order to keep it moving. Hopefully by now you got this. This is false. Okay. Most common question that a lot of people get wrong is if you throw a ball and it leaves your hand, you've pushed it already, but if you throw a ball and it leaves your hand, what makes it keep going? Why does it keep going? Why does it keep flying through the air? And the answer to that is inertia. It keeps flying through the air because it's flying through the air. The question you got to start asking yourself is why does it slow down? Why does it curve toward the ground? And why does it eventually stop? And the answer to that first question is why does it slow down is air resistance. If you've ever thrown anything that has a lot of air resistance, you know it doesn't fly very well. Why do you pack a snowball tight? Why do you crumple paper so tight? Because you're trying to reduce the air resistance. You can throw a wad of paper way farther if you pack it tight because there's less air resistance. So you're not asking yourself what keeps this thing going. You're asking yourself, why does this slow down? And so you take care of that by packing it tight. The second question is, why does it curve toward the earth? Why do you got to throw it up a little bit to make sure it goes far? Well, gravity is an unbalanced force when that ball is flying through the air. There's nothing holding the ball up or pushing it up, a little air resistance. And so you're not asking yourself, why does 
the ball fall to earth. You already know it does. That's because there's an unbalanced force. So you have to deal with that. And then the third question, why does it eventually stop? Well, hopefully somebody catches it. And if nobody ca somebody doesn't catch it, it's going to stop eventually because it's going to hit the ground or a wall or something that provides another unbalanced force. So we're always asking the wrong question. We don't ask the question, why, we shouldn't ask the question, why does it keep going? Because we already know it does it. it. It does. It just does. We're always trying to, when we throw a ball, we're always trying to just automatically uh, take care of the, the things that will stop the ball because we know it's going to stop. We know that there are forces acting against the ball flying through the air. So long story short, why does the ball, or uh, force must be constantly applied to an object in order to keep it moving? False. Once you throw it, it's going to keep moving. All right. And that's because of its inertia again. 19. <clears throat> True or false? The force on an object are balanced, then the object must be at rest. So whenever you see the word must or always or whatever, uh, where to go, you got to ask yourself, all right, is this really saying? I, it's not automatically wrong. You just have to, you just, you just have to uh, ask the question, all right, must it be at rest? That's a flag. No. I just got to, I've given you a couple examples already. A car going 40 miles an hour, that's not at rest, but all the forces are balanced. All right. It's just a constant velocity. So if all the forces on an object are balanced, then that just means it's constant V, constant velocity. Okay. That velocity could be zero, which would be at rest, but it could also be any other speed. All right. For 20, and for this one, I would really recommend you go back and look at all these, actually, these inertia questions. Like, they make sense, kind of, sort of. Like, you could repeat the laws and all that. But going by the quiz we took that one time, you better go back and look at that quiz. You're a passenger in a car. When the driver suddenly slams on the gas, describe the motion of your body and the motion of the car and explain how that relates to Newton's first law. So, if they suddenly slam on the gas that kind of implies to me that you're either not moving you're moving kind of slowly and oh if i could pronounce your name i was i would shout out to you but puppy dogs are fine anyway yeah no i don't do sh uh, keep the shout outs on a uh, you know a little to a minimum today uh anyway you got to ask yourself what's happening. You're already at rest. Your body is at rest. And so your body is going to try to remain at rest. And then the driver hits the gas. The car starts to move. Your body does not until the car pushes you. And so you feel like you're thrown backwards into the seat if somebody hits the gas in the car. But, oh, sorry, I skunked. But um, your, your body is at rest. And uh, so you feel like you're being thrown backward into the seat. Like you feel like you're being pushed backwards, but what's really happening is the car, the, the seat is coming toward you and the seat hits you from behind. So you get pushed forward. You're not being thrown backwards. All right. I'm just going to keep moving on then. So let me just double check to make sure I got everything that uh, common mistakes. Let's see what keeps an object moving. Um, <clears throat> forces on a phone. Okay. Did I already talk about the one? Yeah, I talked about the phone and the car. All right. So, very good. Let's look on the back side here. All right. That was unit 1.1. .1. That was just inertia. So go back and look at that if you need to. Unit 2.2, uh, .2, that's uh, F equals MA. We did that whole big lab on that. Um, so <laughs> net force. There's not much to it, usually, until there is. Uh, if George punches a pumpkin with 8 newtons of force to the east, and Patricia punches the same pumpkin with 9 0.3 newtons of force to the west, what is the net resultant force on a pumpkin? Draw out all the vectors. There are four options to do these um, when it comes to vectors. 
I choose pen. I'm going to use pen. Regular old pen. So this is 2.1. Whoop. And this is 2.2. Make sure I'm on the page here. Almost. Okay. So when it comes to net force, there's basically four options here. Uh, let's make sure I could do this and still squeeze everything on there. All right. Option one, I'm going to go from most easy to difficult. And to be honest, this is probably the order that you should do them in. You should look for this, look for vectors in this order. If um, they're in the same direction, like literally they are par parallel to each other and pointing in the same direction, then you just add them, okay? You just find the sum. If they're parallel to each other, but they're in opposite directions, then you have to, you still add them, but you add the negative. So I'm gonna write this kind of correctly. Add the negative. In other words, you subtract them, all right? So if they're going in opposite directions, you subtract them. Okay, I'll write that. Subtract, all right? Because that's what you're doing. You're literally saying north is positive, south is uh, negative because it's the opposite. So you're just adding. If they are uh, perpendicular to each other, in other words, they're 90 degrees to each other. Well, in that case, you have to do the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, I'll get to an example of that in a minute. And your fourth option is if they are completely other, like some other angles. Um, here, I'll do the theta. Then you have to do like the Sokatoa. And all the rest. You have to basically uh, resolve the vectors into their x and y components, and then you add them or subtract them. So that's the pattern we're going to see. All right. So for this question right here, where junk out of my way here, got a messy desk. All right. If get that on the screen. So George punches a pumpkin with uh, eight point zero newtons of force to the east. So you never eat soggy waffles soggy waffles and so you can sort of remember that uh, it might be something you put on your index card if you need to remember uh, so he pushes uh, with eight newtons to the east so I'm just going to draw a little quick body diagram here um, so east is to the left and so I'm just going to draw an arrow so 8.0 newtons Patricia punches with 9.3 new forces, newtons of force to the west, so that's going to be the opposite direction, slightly longer. Okay, now you probably didn't need to draw that out. You understand they're in opposite directions, but you know, for the sake of, I'm just making sure that you see that. So I'm just going to subtract them. I almost grabbed, I grabbed my calculator. I don't know what's wrong with me. So 9.3 newtons to the west. 8 newtons to the east, you subtract them, you're left with 1.3 newtons. And if you're not sure which direction, you just look at whichever one is larger. In this case, the one to the west is larger. And so for, what is that, number 21, you subtracted them and you got that answer. They're going in opposite directions, so you subtract. <laughs> All right. So we got a hockey player hitting a puck, blah, 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 blah. We got one to the north, one to the west. Give me a second here. All right. So hockey player hitting a puck with 3.7 Newton's force north. And then there's another something going on to the west. Um, so I guess I'll do this one, but this is what we were talking about earlier. 
where uh, they're not in the same direction, they're not opposite, they're perpendicular to each other. So we're just going to do uh, the Pythagorean theorem here. <clears throat> where do we go? Oh yeah. So 3.7 to the north and 6.1 to the west. So I'm just going to draw it, I guess, like, mm, here's my hockey puck. A little bit to the north, a little bit to the west. I'm not drawing it to scale because it's just, these aren't good body diagrams. They're just helping me to visualize what's going on here. So 3.7 newtons to the north and 6.1 newtons to the west. Uh, so if I redraw that as a triangle to the north, to the west, 6.1 and 3.7 get my, my thing out of the way there. So I'm going to do 3.7 newtons squared plus 6.1 newtons squared. That's going to equal my F net. So F net squared. Now I need my calculator. And guess what I was doing earlier? 3.7 squared plus 6.1 squared. I get my answer 50.9. I just take my square root of my answer. If you don't know how to do what I just am doing right now, let me know. Um, all right. So, yeah. So my answer is my F net. So I took the square root of everything. Um, net is equal to 7.1 newtons. And <clears throat> since, what is this, 22? It just wants to know the the uh, net resultant force. So at this point, I guess I could call it done, but it's not really done because I don't know the, um, the angle. It doesn't say just the magnitude. So I'm going to actually go ahead and figure out the angle. And I went here, I went to the north first, and then I went to the west. So I'm going to call this my angle. And if you remember, let's do this this way. So here's my angle, this is my opposite side, this is my adjacent side, and this is my hypotenuse. This marker is a little bit too thick, get rid of that. So my adjacent side, I got my opposite side. So I've got, I wanna find, I, I got opposite and adjacent. So I'm gonna use inverse of TOA. So uh, I'm doing that wrong. So the angle is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. So all I'm going to do is inverse tangent of the opposite, which is 6.1 over the adjacent, 3.7, and put that into my handy dandy calculator. So inverse tan of 6.1 divided by 3.7. So I get an angle of 58.8 degrees. <laughs> and uh, so that's gonna be the angle. So how does this all work? All right, so I'm gonna start by writing my actual final answer. The F net is equal to 7.1 Newtons. We already got that. And now I'm gonna put the direction and where is that angle going to go? Well, originally over here, I went north, and then I went to the west. I'm going to write that just like that now. North, 58.8 degrees, west. And after all that, I'm definitely putting a box around it so that you know it's my final answer. All right, holy cow, it's getting late. I'm going to do this for an hour. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, you know what? I forgot I didn't start right at 8.30. Do we have to provide the angle? Uh, yes. If be ready to provide the angle, I should say. Um, know how to do that. Here's the key. If, where one, where one was that? That was... That was this one, number 22. It just says, what's the net resultant force? Where are we at? There it is. What's the net resultant force? It 
if it just says the magnitude, the mag so remember a vector has three things to it. A vector has mud, all right? A vector has the magnitude, uh, I think I spelled it right. It's got the unit, 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 and it's got the direction. Let me get my shadow out of there. So every vector has these three things, magnitude, unit, and direction. No, we're not done. I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Um, but anyway, the question is, do we have to always have the direction? The answer is, if it, a lot of times it's going to ask for the magnitude, in which case you're done. If it, if it doesn't, then yeah, the direction is part of it. So just be ready to do that. All right. Good question. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, I know we're on 21. So, all right. Mars lander. So basically 23 and 24 are similar. I got to do one of them. I'm going to do the Mars lander. I'm going to do number, let's not do 23. Let's do 24. I'm going to do 24 because that's one of those big ones where you had to add the two vectors together. So I'm not going to go quick, but I'm going to now, I think I'm going to stick to just the stuff that we're going to like the hard things. So Mars lander makes a final adjustment of a firing a, make sure it's up here. So I'm going to do number 24. Firing one thruster rocket with this blah, blah, blah. So it, it fires with this much force south and east, and another with this much force west and to the south. So what's the net result in force on the lander? Draw all the vectors. Oh, I didn't draw the vectors earlier. Um, so you see it's the same wording as before, so we're going to have to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out the vectors and uh, write them up here. So we got 22.0. I'm sorry, 220. Point zero newtons south 26 degrees east okay and effectively what we're doing here is I'm taking my time I'm gonna go slow on this one I'm gonna go slow on this one and another at this one and so what we're doing here is adding these vectors together because if you think about it the spaceship here has a lot of uh, thrusters and they're all pointing in different directions and so uh, they they have to if they want the spaceship to go in a certain direction or accelerate in a certain direction they have to like fire them in different combinations in order to get the the, the thrust vector that they want so that's west and 57 degrees to the south and this is number number 24 okay so now I don't need my paper anymore because I've got the information I need. Okay. I'm going to take my time with this one. This is one of the big ones. <clears throat> and there is a question on this. And you're going to have to show your work. Because it's on the uh, FRQ. One like this. So. What do we got to do? Well, earlier. I said there's four possibilities. Well. Four things to try. Are they in the same direction? No. Are they in opposite directions? No. They're all over. Are they perpendicular to each other? No. So this is our other one. This is the one where we have to resolve the vectors and then add them. And what I mean by resolve them is uh, we have to find, we basically get these weird angles. We got to basically make them so they're all either in the same direction to each other or in the opposite directions. And that's what this is all about. All right. So hopefully, if you haven't done this in a while, this will seem much easier than it was the one we did it a few weeks ago, because hopefully, I, I'm not saying it's going to, but I hope it does seem easier, but it's not new. So here's what we do. We take these two. Uh, there were a bunch of steps. I think I had five or six steps. I'm going to try to stick to that as best I can, uh, but effectively, essentially, it boils down to finding x and y for each one, adding the x with the other x, adding the y with the other y, and then doing the Pythagorean theorem and doing what we just did for question 22. All right, let's do this. I'll just walk you through it. All right, let me make sure we got my camera all set. Okay, so 220 south and to the east. So again, this is just an eyeballing. We're just doing this to, we're not drawing it. Um, 
scale. We're just going to draw it to help us. So south and to the east. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow south and to the east. Um, or I could go south and to the east. That's south and to the west. See, got to draw your compass. Never eat soggy waffles. So never eat soggy waffles. All right, don't take shortcuts. Some of us do. So south and to the east. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay, so we have our south and to the east, and it's south 26 degrees to the east. Um, because south comes first, I'm going to go south first. I'm going to make a triangle out of this, and I'm going to go south first, and then I'm going to go east. So, okay, so I got my south and my east. And the reason I did that, the reason I went south and then east, is because then I know that up here, where I started from, is my angle. This will be my theta. That's going to be my 26 degrees. Not down here, because, and that's why I started here. This here is my 90 degrees. All right. So what that means, not that what that means, but so now we have a triangle. And because I've got a triangle, I'm going to label my, you saw how like even drawing the compass rows might be super helpful because you make little mistakes will mess you up. I've made enough little mistakes in my life. I like to not make them. So this is my opposite side. I label my triangles. This is my adjacent side. This is my hypotenuse. All right, now I won't screw those up. This is my force. This is my net force. Okay, I'll start using the terminology that we've been using for a while, or that we've come to use. This is my net force. This is gonna be my 220. This right here is my Fy. This is my Fx. I just had to find those. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to add the Ys and the Xs together. So I'm going to do my four step thing. Um, I'm going to, I know that, what way do I always do this? Uh, what's going to be the most? Probably let's just go with my hypotenuse. We'll just, we'll just start with the triangle. We'll look at it like it's a triangle, okay? So looking at the triangle, let's identify all the parts of the triangle. The hypotenuse, we've got our opposite side, we've got our adjacent side, and we've got our theta, our angle, okay? So when in doubt, just look at it like it's a triangle because that's all that it is. Let me scooch that up a bit. All right, my hypotenuse is my F net. And that's my 220 newtons, okay? My opposite side, I don't know it, but I do know that's my Fx, okay? That's the force in the x direction, the horizontal force. My adjacent side is going to be my Fy, my vertical force. And I don't know those. I could put question marks. I guess I could do that right now. Okay, and my angle is 26 degrees. All right, so I've got that listed out. Now I continue on and we use the um, trig functions where I'm not even gonna like look it up. I'm just gonna write it as I know it because it doesn't matter, I'm using the variables. So I don't have to match anything yet. I'm just going to write it down. I do know that h times the sine of theta. This is so katoa. So so has an o. That's going to be my opposite side. All right. And I know that h times the cosine of theta is equal to my adjacent side. All right. Those are just always the case for triangles. And this is what I was saying earlier. I'm going to start with the triangles. And then I'm going to make it about forces. Same thing here. I have my triangle stuff. This has nothing to do with forces. I'm going to use this to figure out my forces. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So my H is my F net, which is 200 and 20 degrees, I'm sorry, 220 newtons. 
times the sine of my angle, which is 26 degrees. All right. I'll solve that in a second. My h down here, 220 newtons times the cosine of it, of 26 degrees, equals some number. I'm going to solve in a second. All right. So that will actually be, uh, before we solve it, because that's solving is the last step, let's actually put in what these things are going to be uh, for the forces. So my opposite sign side is going to be my fx. That's still showing up, right? Let's scooch that over a bit. All right. And my adjacent side is my fy. All right. So fx, fy. Solve those. So 220, let's do the parentheses, how about 220 times sine of 26. Let me just check something really quick. I want to make sure that I'm in, yeah, I'm in degrees. And I'm just going to do that again, but I'm going to change it with cosine. So I was able to do both kind of within a couple of seconds here. FX is 96.4 newtons. And ideally, I'm not going to round it, but I'm kind of out of room on my paper. FY is 197.7 newtons. Okay. So I did that for one of my uh, angles, one of my vectors. I What did I do? I broke it up. I resolved it into if it's X and Y components. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing with my other one. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to put direction uh, just to kind of keep it myself straight. So I'm, I am out of room. I do know that I have two jet directions, south and east. All right. So uh, this is X. So that would be east. That would be side to side or horizontal. And this one is my FY, which is vertical up and down. So that would be south. Okay, so now I have my MUD, my magnitude unit and direction. And the direction is going to be important because, well, we're going to add it to the next one. Okay. I went through that one a little bit slower. Let's do the same thing for the next angle. Um, so this is 89.5 newtons west and south. So in this case, I'm going to draw it west and south. So in this case, do, do, do. Scooch that up. And I went west this time, and I went south this time. All right. So again, looking at it like it's a triangle, because I went west first, that's my theta up there, 90 degrees and all that. Then, so I don't make mistakes, my adjacent side, which is right next to the angle, my opposite side from the angle, and my hypotenuse. All right, so there's my triangle. This represents the net force of that particular thruster. This one represents the X. And this one represents the force in the Y direction. All right. Now, really quick, a little aside, question number 23, the reason I skipped it is because this one it's got a gust of wind only going to the east. So after you resolve this first vector, you don't have to worry about resolving this vector. There is no, like, it's not a combination. It's just straight east. So this whole second part, you wouldn't have to do. You would just add that in. In this case, for 24, we do have to do it. So let's do this. All right. We'll follow the same pattern as before. Start out with our triangle. What's our triangle? Our triangle has the hypotenuse. Our triangle has the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the theta. 
All right. Hypotenuse is our F net, which is 89.5 newtons. Our opposite side, we'll look at our triangle here. This time, our opposite side is Fy, so watch out for that. All right. F Y. This is why you do the triangle thing first and then get to the forces. All right, and just a step at a time, like really just go a step at a time. Don't, you will get overwhelmed if you look at the whole thing all at once. All right, one step at a time is all you need. So acceleration, I'm sorry, it's getting late. The adjacent side is my FX. I don't know either one of those. My angle, 57 degrees. It's the same equations from before. I'm tempted to not even write them down, but I don't want to screw this up. So once again, this is going to be my opposite side. Adjacent side. And again, that's true all the time. It's once you finish, can you show everything you wrote so I can take a picture? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Um, I think I can do it. I might have to, well, yeah, I'll do my list. All right. So once, uh, this is true for all triangles. This is just, okay, this is a triangle thing. A triangle thing. That and that. All right. It's not a vector thing. It's not a forces thing. It's a vector thing. It's not a forces thing. Okay. So these things are just independent of what we're doing we're just it it's like you know it's like it's a it's a tool in our tool chest it's like okay we got a hammer it's like you know we use it for different things all right so now i'm going to plug it in just like i did before all right i think i might have worked this out in the key i might be wrong though but check the key but i'll still do what you asked i'll still put it up um all right so in this case our h is 89.5 newtons times sine of, uh, where was I, 57. And that'll be my opposite side, in which case this is Fy. All right, and now over here, 89.5 newtons times the cosine of 57 degrees is my Fx. All right, so, I got those two. And just like last time, I'm going to put them both in my calculator right after each other and I'll get them both at the same time. Now, it's very, very important that you understand, I just hit the thing, that y you look, is it both on the screen? Yeah. Like FY, it's it's not going to match up like on your paper, like FX, XY. That's not what happened. We started with the triangle. And so since we started with the triangle, you get like, that's why I always say the four steps are important. So you're identifying what's what using these for this first step. Then you go from here. You don't assume anything. Just go step by step by step and you're going to be fine. All right. So that's one of the common mistakes that people make that, that I've seen that was made on the previous quiz and stuff is rushing you're trying to get through it take your time don't be afraid to take the little steps all right it takes a little extra time but you're less likely to get it wrong so 89.5 times sine of 57 so my fy is 75.1 newtons and cosine my fx is 48.7 newtons before you finish can you give some advice yep i will in fact let me make a little note of that uh note card all right I'll try to remember I, I mean i wrote it down i'll remember all right so direction again, we gotta remember our direction and yeah, might be able to squeeze it in over here. So let's try it, is it on the screen? Yeah. So though it's Y, so I gotta look at what direction was vertical. And in this case, it was south. Okay, 
This one was my x, so in this case it was to the west. All right. I don't remember what step that was. That might be step one. I'm sorry about that. That's just how these things are. I didn't invent it. But we got our vectors. We resolved our vectors into its x and y components. So we now have these two. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to go off screen. I'll try to squeeze it in. I'm going to just put a little line right here because we got our first thing done. We resolved our vectors. So now we have to add our x's and our y's. All right. So f x. Hang on. How do I write this? Let's do this right. Remember that little symbol I showed you today? We have to sum our fx. So that may, that just means sum. You're not gonna have to worry about that simple. And so the sum of our fx will be um, gerg. Why do I write that? So the sum of our fx's will be 96.4 newtons to the east. I think it's still up on the screen. Yeah, top right corner. Plus, and I gotta be careful here, X is only 48.7 Newtons to the west. All right. Now, opposite directions. So, what do we do? We subtract. I'm not gonna do this with my head. Which one do we have put in first? Put the bigger one in first. You're gonna deal with the direction later. All right. So I'm just going to subtract them, 48.7, um, and I got, all right. So that's going to give me 47.7 Newtons. What direction? Which one's bigger? That's all you got to do. All right, is it going to be east or is it going to be west? They were opposite, so I subtracted them, all right. So just to be clear, I sub subtract okay I subtract through the numbers and because east was bigger that one is left over all right so that is my fx the sum of my fy's is going to be similar well you'll see not similar but well yeah similar uh, we have 197.7 newtons to the south plus 75.1 newtons to the south. All right, they're the same, they're both south, so I'm going to add. Scooch that up a bit. And once again, I can do that in my head. 197.7 plus 95.1. So I got a big old number, 272.8 Newtons to the south. Okay. I'm get my big old fat head out of the way. All right, I don't think it's good, okay. While you're digesting that. All right. Good news is we got the hard parts done. We now are, we have our, I think this was like step two and three in the original steps that I came up with. So we have our FX and our FY. We know the direction is east and south. And so all I'm going to do is draw arrows to represent that. Uh, I am going to have to scooch this up a little bit so that I can fit it all in there. Uh, like I, somebody asked me to, uh, <laughs> somebody asked me to take a picture of the whole thing. I'll see what I can do about that in a second. Um, all right, so I have east and south. So it's a giant number to the south and a number to the east. And so all I'm going to do is just to represent that south and east. And it's not going to be to scale. That doesn't matter. I went south and east. You could have went east and then south. It doesn't matter. All right. If you went east and south, you would get the complementary angle. I'll show you what I mean in a second. 
So I went south and then east. I don't know why. I think it's because I wanted to draw the big number first. So point is I'm trying to find that side. All right. And we now have them perpendicular to each other. If I were to go back to that last page, you'd know you had to do the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to draw these or label these anyway, 272.8 newtons and 47.7 newtons. Okay. So I want to know F net. This is the actual F net. So this is where I'm going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. <laughs> nice. All right. So I could, just do this in, I could just do this in my calculator, but because I'm showing you how to do this, I'm going to write this out. And I might do that anyway just to make sure uh, I don't screw this up because, you know, there's a lot of work. So 272.8 plus squared, by the way, 47.7 squared equals my F net squared. All right, my big old head's gonna get in the way probably, but that's all right. So 272.8 squared plus 47.7 squared and big old number, take the square, take the square root of that number. So, Good. I'm glad you think it's easy. I really do. So my final F net is 276.9 Newtons. All right. So I just got that. That's just the magnitude though. It doesn't, um, it doesn't show you like how to find the angle. So we still need the angle. We've got the magnitude in the unit, but now we need the angle. So that's going to be our question is how do we do that? So I believe this was another step in that original day where we had like this five or six steps. So now we got to go back to like what we did in the previous page where somebody asked me, do I have to do the direction? In this case, yeah, absolutely, you have to do the direction. So like before, I started up here. And so I'm going to just have my angle right there. All right. I went south and then east. So that means, what color was I using before? Blue. That means that this is my adjacent side. This is my opposite side. I'm going to use those two to find the uh, angle like I did before. I'm going to use uh, the angle. It's going to be equal to the inverse tangent of it's Oa, Toa, Soka Toa. So it's going to be inverse tangent. It's always opposite over adjacent for tangent. So uh, the angle is inverse tangent of opposite uh, 47.7 tempted to go fast here you're gonna mess up if you go fast if you find yourself rushing stop and slow down 272.8 newtons and so my angle my theta oh hey hey sorry get that up there is inverse tangent of 47.7 divided by big old number 0.8, 9.9. Okay. The last step was easy. Well, the last step was very straightforward. Write the answer. So I'm going to do that. So my final answer, F net is equal to 276.9 newtons. Oh, I'm getting all, look at me, I'm getting all excited. We're going to go off the page here. Uh, and then I went in my original, in my triangle I drew over here, I went south and then east. So I'm going to do that just like that. South, 9.9 .9 degrees east. All right. Final answer, box that thing and be done. If you went east and then south, it would just be 90 degrees. It would be the com complementary angle. So 90, I could probably do this in my head, but I don't trust myself. 80.1. So equally acceptable because you might have gone east and then south would be east 80.1 degrees 
to the south. That's just as fine. All right, either one's fine. We're going to have enough time for all this. I would hope so. Uh, what is there, like 30-some multiple choice questions? And those go pretty quick. And then there'll be one question like this. This, I'm pretty sure, is the last question on the FRQ. All right. So don't forget, I'm going slowly because I'm showing you how to do it. Hopefully you've had some practice at this and it'll, I think you're going to have time like during class. Yeah, I think so. I think you're gonna have time. All right. Um, so as requested, let's see if I can get all that on one shot. I think, Oh, nope, I sure didn't. Holy cow. All right. Well, it's one full page. I'll hold it there for a second. All right, I think that's good. Oh, I gotta do the autofocus, hang on. Let's let that focus a second. All right. All right, I'm gonna go back down. All right. Um, all right, so that's that. Where are we at? That's the bottom. Okay. What time we got? 8.51, what? All right. The rest of these things, uh, relationship between force and acceleration, that's just F equals MA. All right, that's just your basic math. You gotta make sure you, uh, you try some of those questions out. I'm not gonna, um, why getting hit in the head with one raise move? Let's see. A equals F over. The only thing I would say is just be aware that um, this is kind of going into also weight. Um, so F equals MA. If we're talking about the F of gravity, that's equal to the mass times the force of gravity. And oh, hang on, focus. And on Earth that g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram all right it might be it is different on other planets so just be aware of that on another planet it's going to be like another number all right so uh and in that question questions like that will either give you the g for that other planet or it will tell you the weight the fg and it will tell you the mass and you have to find the g for that planet all right um Let's see, the jack-o'-lantern, the Newton's third laws. I mean, I'll come back to the jack-o'-lantern question. I know that's another big one in the ramp. Uh, <laughs> just remember that um, you're posting. Yeah, I'm going to post this on YouTube, all right? And uh, I'll do that right away as soon as I can. It's recording. Yeah, it's recording. So, oh, it wasn't recording. Um, just remember for action-reaction, just switch to nouns. All right. If you push on the wall, the wall pushes on you. All right. If you, if the earth pulls you down, you pull up on the earth. Yeah. I'm going to post it immediately when I'm done. I'm going to post this video as, as soon as I'm done with this. So hopefully in a few minutes, I mean, it's going to be about, uh, yeah, it, as soon as I get done with it though, I'm going to post it on my YouTube and I guess I'll, ooh, I will send the link to the YouTube to the remind and I guess to the um, to the email. All right, so I'll send it to both. But it'll be on my channel, Mr. Turn, on YouTube. So just remember that forces are always equal. It's the acceleration that's going to be different because the masses are different. All right, so do that. If you haven't done that Khan Academy thing, just check that out. It's just keep that straight. Forces are always what's the remind? I paste on Google. All right, I'll I'll see. I, I'll do the Google class thing too. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. All right. Let's do. Which one should we do? I feel like I did one of these in class today one of these in class today. Um, I'm tempted to not do it. If you want me to do it, I'll do it, but I definitely want to do a ramp question. All right. 
So let me first do the ramp question, and then I'll see about doing the uh, the hanging the hanging mass question. All right. So the ramp question is very straightforward, though, so it'll actually be pretty quick. Let's say you have a 55 kilogram object on a ramp. All right. So the mass is 55 kilogram, and I'm summarizing. I'm not going to write a story or anything like that. Uh, the ramp, so that's the mass of it. It's sitting on a ramp. The ramp is 33 degrees, and it doesn't move. Okay. That means this thing is just sitting here on a ramp, being itself, not moving. Forces are balanced. All right. What's the force of friction holding it up? I could ask you any question. I could ask you what's its weight. Well, the weight would be really easy. You just multiply 55 times 9.8. That's going to be the weight. In fact, that's going to be one of the first steps we're going to do. Um, draw the forces on it. There are three forces, three forces acting on it. The forces go like this. Yeah. You got gravity pulling it down. Let me make sure this is on the screen. And it's still fuzzy. Give me a second. Let me see if I got auto focus. So you've got gravity pulling it down. It ain't gonna cop cooperate. Try it one more time. Ooh, it's doing something. There we go. Sorry about that. So gravity pulling it down. You've got, and I'm drawing these not to scale right now. Friction. Friction. Holding it up, keeping it from sliding down. And I feel like I already, oh yeah, I did do one of these earlier. So this is the normal force. All right, holding it up. I did one like that a couple questions ago. Yep. Okay. So bottom line is we drew the diagram already. All right. So what do we do with that? We want to find the uh, let's let's find the frictional force. Let's find everything. All right. But maybe the question would be like, what's the force of friction holding it up? So you got to realize, like I said earlier, there's only one thing pulling it down. Gravity is pulling it down the ramp, and gravity is pulling it into the ramp. All right. And so just like earlier when I drew this, I'm going to use that to draw my triangles. Now here's the trick. Not the trick. Here's the thing to remember. That is equal to that. So the force of friction is equal to the what's called the uh, parallel force of gravity. And the normal force will be equal to what's called the perpendicular force of gravity. All right, Those forces, this is perpendicular to the ramp, this is parallel to the ramp. The force of gravity pulling per parallel, the force of gravity pulling perpendicular to the ramp. Since it's not moving, look for that. All right, I don't think there's any questions on the test that's going to be moving. So since it's not moving, understand that those are balanced. Those are going to be the same. So we have the beginnings of a triangle already. I'm going to do this like this. We got our force of gravity going down. Turn this sideways. And we've got our here, FG. We've got our F perpendicular, and we've got our F parallel. All right. And um, the angle, well, it's it's measured, just measure that from the top. All right. That's going to be our theta right there. And like usual, what's our opposite side? What's our adjacent side? And what's our hypotenuse? All right. Going back to those triangles again. So we got our triangles we could find everything. Um, we just want to find the force of friction though. Uh, I could ask what's the normal force, but honestly, it's a weird question. So let's find the uh, force of friction. All right, what's the force of friction going to be equal to? The force of friction will be equal to this force right over here. And that is going to be this parallel force right here. That's our opposite side. Opposite, so katoa, so, that's sine. So h times the sine of theta is going to be equal to my opposite side. Okay. What's my h? h is going to be my force of gravity. Oh, I don't know my force of gravity. Well, crud. 
If only we knew how to figure that out. Oh, wait. We just did that. Well, I talked about it briefly. Force of gravity is mg. All right. So force of gravity is mg. So my force of gravity is going to be 55 newtons times 9.8. Getting a little crowded in here. And so 55 times 9.8 is 539 so newtons all right so h is my force of gravity 539 539 newtons times the sine of theta 30, 30, 33 degrees in this question that I basically just made up. And that's going to be equal to my opposite side, which is what I'm trying to, sort of trying to find, which is my F parallel, which is equal to, because they're balanced, my force of friction. So once I figure this out, I basically have my answer. Calculator. Go farther up. Keep going. Okay. So now I can't see it though. 539 times sine of 33. So my force of friction. It's not even on there. Oh, there it is. 539. Nope. A little further. There it is. I was looking at the wrong screen. My force of friction is 293. Point six newtons. <sighs> That's it. All right. That's it. That's how much friction is holding it up. If I ask what's the normal force instead from this instead of normal, use the cosine. Find the adjacent side. All right. Just remember, it doesn't move. So that means that all the forces are balanced. The sum of the forces equals zero. They're all balanced. So perpendicular and friction, I'm sorry, parallel and friction, they're going in opposite directions. You add them together, they, give, they make zero. All right. Should I do a, uh, I mean, is there a request for the angle question, the hanging mass question? Should I do one of these? Should I do this one? I worked, I'll, 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 it's okay. I mean, there's a delay, so I'm going to talk. Uh, if I see a yes, I'll do it. If not, I'm going to kind of call this a night. All right. Or if you have any questions. Meanwhile, I'm going to look up for like uh, most missed questions. Uh, small car versus big truck. All right. Okay. I did just do one like this in class. Uh, it's the same type of thing where all the forces have to be equal to each other. They have to be uh, summed up. So what ends up happening? I'm still not seeing anybody saying yes, but I'm going to tease it here a little bit, is when you've got your, uh, I'm not going to finish my force of gravity right now. I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to draw this, all right? And basically what has to happen is the upward forces of those two. So basically it's going to be like that, because... Still not seeing anybody say yeah. So these two together have to equal this. So you know this angle, you know that angle. Find the opposite side, find the opposite side, add them together, and that's going to equal your force of gravity. Okay. I think that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, what time is it? 9.04. I'll be up for a little while longer. Uh, use the remind. I'll be in, in the first period in the morning. Uh, I'm going to post this on YouTube right now. Well, in a few minutes. And I'll post it to everything. Oh, wait. There was a question. 
No cards. Well, it should go in your no card. Um, yeah, thanks for the reminder. So, no cards, uh, honestly, what's helpful to you? Uh, obviously, the, the equations, like FG equals MG, make sure you know that G on Earth is 9.8, all right? And it might be different on other planets. If you want to have a example of all the, like all the triangle stuff, like all the triangle stuff, Sokatoa, like you saw what we just did tonight. So H sine of the theta, all right? That is, in the case of a ramp, that's always gonna be your, the frictional force or whatever. It might not be friction. It might be a rope. Like seriously, if you're holding on to something and keeping it going down from a ramp, that's that's the same thing. Okay, it might not be friction. It's whatever the force is that's keeping it from rolling down the ramp. Okay, so just remember Sokatoa. Why Sokatoa? Sine of is the opposite over hypotenuse. Ka adjacent over hypotenuse, and Toa opposite over adjacent. All right, so have those written down on your note card. Um, I don't think you're gonna squeeze an entire example on this, on, on your note card, but I mean, if you can squeeze, if you can write really small, you can write whatever you want in your note card. Uh, so F, oh, I have it on the one note too. So I might not get everything right now. So F, G equals M, G. F equals M, A. Uh, the the Sokatoa stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna write that and you write whatever you want from that. All the equations is fine. Inverse tan, whatever. Um, was there anything else? So whatever you need, but that's this is what I would have. Oh, the compass, northeast, southwest. I mean, that's a little thing, but you know, you don't wanna make a little mistake. Other than that, if you were like listening, you're gonna be okay, I think, but you just let me know. All right. I'm looking at the screen, see if anybody has any chat. I'm going to wait. I'm just going to go like this. And then I'll let me know when the delay kicks in. There's like a five second delay at least. Anything else? All right. I just clap my hands. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you in class tomorrow. And that was good. All right. Take it easy.